Welcome back to the YouTube channel. I'm Tom, and uh, I get a lot of questions about the solar array that we've got set up for living off grid here in Colorado. Uh, again, uh, we're at 8,500 feet here in Colorado, and um, uh, totally off grid. Uh, it would cost a lot of money to uh, get uh, power brought in, and quite honestly, no real advantage, I don't think. So behind me here, we've got two solar arrays that are set up. Uh, providing four, uh, sorry, 14 kilowatts of power. Uh, the system itself uh, can only handle 10 kilowatts of power at maximum. Uh, it's a sort of a new style uh, of way of setting it up. And basically, because solar panels are so inexpensive, you get more solar panels than the system can handle. So that in times of peak power, you're actually not even using all the power. But then in the winter time, when you're when you're getting less power, you actually are um, um, able to maximize and get more than you would if you stayed within those peak powers. So this system can, like I said, can handle a maximum of 10 kilowatts of power actually into the batteries at one time. Um, but it has the, I've got 14 kilowatts of actual panels. Uh, I've got two different arrays set up feeding two different charge controllers. Each array has uh, four strings of seven panels. Uh, so, and uh, I'm providing, uh, um, it can provide a maximum of 300 volts on each string. Uh, and what that does is that means that right now, bright and early in the morning, I'm actually generating electricity. If they were not in strings providing 300 volts, I would not be generating power right now. So uh, the system works pretty good. There are things that I would do differently and I will do differently. Um, I like the rack system. It works good. Uh, I've got a plastic extending shovel that's meant for getting snow off your roof. That does a pretty good job of getting them off. And I also have these, these walkways that I can, that I can walk up and, and, you know, deal with each individual panel, get access to them and so forth. Um, doing it in the future, I will do an array that is on the ground level and, and does tilt. There's no sense in making arrays that track the sun anymore because solar panels are so cheap. Instead of buying the tracker, just drop the, drop the idea of the tracker, buy more solar panels. Uh, you'll be much happier in the long run. Um, plus, you're tracking in the mornings and in the evenings when you're not generating the, the intensity of the sun is there. You're not going to generate the power. You really want those panels pointing due south, grab that maximum midday sun. Um, I've seen videos of people getting solar rays and pointing them to the east so they get power earlier. Well, you're throwing away your best hours of power by not pointing it south. Don't do that. If you need sun early in the morning because your batteries are low, you need more batteries. You need to be able to, first thing in the morning, you should still have plenty of power. And so you should be able to easily wait until noon, get that noon sun when it's, when it's valuable. So... Um, the rack works. I got, I've, I really don't have any complaints with it other than it's dangerous, you know, climbing up there in the winter, in the snow to wipe off solar panels and so forth. That's why I moved to the shovel on the, you know, 20 foot, you know, extending, um, uh, boom. But in the future, it'll all be essentially ground level, uh, and it'll be able to tilt up and, and take care of that. So that's, that's our main source of power is this 14 kilowatt array feeding t into two five kilowatt um, charge controllers. Uh, everything is uh, outback power. Uh, so far, I've been extremely happy with them. Uh, in the entire year and a half we've been on them, uh, I've had one issue and they jumped on it and took care of it. Uh, very easy, good tech support, good troubleshooting, very happy. We, uh, they then feed into 90 kilowatt hours of uh, lithium iron phosphate batteries. The cells were purchased from China and I assembled the cells myself and uh, have been very happy with it. Saved a lot of money doing it that way. And quite honestly, all cells are basically at this point produced in China. So you're just eliminating middlemen. So uh, the batteries are 48 volts and uh, most of them are about 280 amp hours at uh, 48 volts gives me, uh, it's about 16 kilowatts per battery. Um, I'm sure the numbers are off a little bit there, but that's the rough idea. And uh, I've got multiple of those batteries put together. And it's super easy to just build another battery, put your own BMS on it, battery management system, and, uh, and, and add another battery to the bunch if you need more power. 
uh, and, and we all need more power. Plus, honestly, the more power you have, the better off it is because you're going to be uh, charging and discharging the batteries less because there's more of them sharing that load, which is going to increase the lifespan of those batteries. So that's our main power system. I then feed into a uh, inverter and from Outback Solar or out, sorry, Outback Power, they have uh, and, and we got one of these. They have kits that include everything mounted on the board. It's got all the circuit breakers. It's got, you basically hook up your batteries, you hook up the solar panels, and you hook the in, hook up uh, your, your house breakers. And, and that's it. Uh, it's very easy to set up. It really doesn't cost you any more than buying the components individually. And you get a really nice, well set up system. We also have this wind turbine. Just set it up the other day. Um, it was one I actually had around. We, we had, uh, we, we've had a lot of wind the last couple of years here. So, um, this is our opportunity to just harness some of that weather in times when we may not be, um, uh, producing power because of the sun, either at night, um, or just, uh, during, uh, during cloudy days when it's windy and gusty and stormy. Uh, obviously right now there's, there's no wind whatsoever. Um, just a, a heads up on a couple of things on the wind turbine that's worth noting. Um, wind turbines do not produce efficient power. Um, solar panels, I recommend you buy used. Buy them from, um, I personally did it from Santan Solar. I've been very happy with the product. Um, they come from, my understanding is, that they come from solar farms when they refresh their equipment. They, they've only been used for about 10 years, so they've got at least 20 years left to their life. And instead of paying $300 a panel, I'm paying $40 or $50 a panel. Um, and their support is good. Very happy with, with how it goes. And I can buy, a, again, a lot more solar panels. If I have trouble a few years down the road, no big deal. I just get some more. Um, I, like I said, I've been very happy with with that result um it saved a lot of money and it's it's kept us it, it, it's it's helped us able to do this um i've put about a little over thirty thousand dollars into the system and if i had bought everything new and especially if i had had someone install it i know that it would have been in the hundred and fifty thousand dollar range to have it done so doing it yourself diy absolutely drops the price incredibly and I'm familiar with the system. When you have somebody else do it for you, when it breaks out here, middle of nowhere, we're 13 miles that way to the nearest plowed road in the winter. Uh, so being able, being extremely familiar with the system is, uh, is definitely going to be worth your, worth your while. Uh, there's a lot of things like, um, you know, this, this wind turbine uh, only uh, produces 600 watts of power. They knew... They're give or take five hundred to a thousand dollars on uh, on Amazon, and I can get a lot more power out of solar. I happen to have this one, which is why uh, the, this is the the way that we've gone. We are, I already had this for when I was living in an RV, traveling around, and I set it up and gained some power. Uh, but uh, it is um, so if you've got one, it's worth hooking up, and maybe as a supplemental power source, it's worth getting one. But it is just, it's just not efficient until you get to a large scale. They just don't have the power. Um, I am actually running uh, extension cords using it. So uh, one of the things, if you do do this, that you're going to want to, most of them come with a break. I make my own. All you do, so there's, there's three phases. There's three power sources. It, they generate AC power and that feeds into a, a, charger and the charger connects up to your battery very simple little device so it's got three wires in and it's got the two wires out to the positive and negative of your battery so in times of high wind the charge control the charger charge controller will do what's called braking and it will actually to keep your device from going out of control it just shorts out all those wires together and it does an amazing job of stopping the turbine from spinning you can also and i recommend it doing your own. And all I do is since I use extension cords to get it inside the house, because they're, we're only talking this wind turbine only is 600 Watts of power. It's really not very much and it's AC. So I'm running it through regular extension cords 
and I've taken one end of that extension cord and I just twist, uh, uh, wire nutted the three together. So as the wind turbine spins, it generates power. The power feeds back into itself as braking. So your engine braking and it's very, very effective. Um, and I just keep that out of here. So if, if something happens to the charge controller, it doesn't break um, the, the system. And, and uh, you know, I got a storm coming and this thing's going to destroy itself. I can just come out. I can put that plug, plug it into the extension cord and it shorts all of them out and it's done. So um, that's essentially our power system. Uh, it works pretty well. Um, don't know on the, on the wind yet because I, I just set this up the other day but we'll find out how it works and uh, I'll obviously keep you updated. But that's the overall idea of our power system right now. So thanks for tuning in and uh, catch you on the next one.